<laughs> this flower farm over here. This farm is a fantastic farm design. I can't remember offhand who designed this farm either. I believe it might have been a Silent Whisper design, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but however, this farm does work incredibly well. And I made two of them side by side, and the rates that both of these put out are just astronomical. You just, you don't need that many flowers. Um, however, that supplies all of my dyes that I have here, and I have every dye on the server. So if any of the members need dye, I'm usually one of the people to help them out. And here I have one of my farms to harvest all of the cocoa beans. That's where I get the brown dye from. Over here I have a sugarcane farm and also a bamboo farm. Depending whatever you plant in there, that's fully automatic, runs off of bone meal. And then on that second tier there, I also have another sugarcane farm up there, which runs automatically. I also have a cactus farm here, which has long since been backed up, spewing cactus all over the place. And inside of here, it's not very pretty. However, it's been more functional rather than something to look at. Again, redstone is my thing. Building really is not. So this up here is my general mob farm. Still kind of always infinitely under construction because of the mob spawning rules always constantly changing. And inside of here, this is where all of them drop down into a trident killer. And this trident killer will basically kill all the mobs and then all of the items will go down below into the storage system which is down the stairs here and then i have a ton of storage for all of the items here and here as well and then down below i also have access to a nether portal which takes us to the nether hub not too much to see over here i have a few silos for some of my most used items here i have a stone generator as well and then over here I have Slucifer. I'm not really going to go into a whole bunch of detail over Slucifer. However, Slucifer is my gold farm, and this is a um, overpowered, incredible. Yeah, yeah. this uh, this design was designed by Navy Nex, and this thing is absolutely amazing. If you have not checked out Navy Nex's video on it, I highly recommend go and do it. You will not regret it. It does take some time to build, but you'll never have to build anything related to gold again. Uh, however, this thing on the bottom, I totally designed the whole catching system for the gold swords. That way, all of the gold swords were not plugging up the system. I have an entire tutorial on this section here. So if you are interested in seeing a gold sword filter, go and check out my video. It is on my channel inside of my farms tutorial playlist. And this thing puts out a ton of gold. I have recently cleaned this up, but I have a shulker box full of gold blocks. Over here, just as it puts out a ton of gold, it also puts out a ton of rotten flesh. And there's rotten flesh in every single chest that you look at. And I also have a lever to where I can dispose of all of this rotten flesh if I desire. However, I usually give it to other members to do some trading. So... That's pretty much it for the gold farm. So let's move on over to the villager trading hall. But I think we're going to take the zipper over there. So if you want to, I don't know if you want to meet me down here or if you want to meet me over at the villager trading hall. I'll meet you over there. So down here is where I used to have all of my villager trading. That's why this is blocked off here. That way no zombies get in there and kill my villagers there's still a few villagers in there but i have since moved all of my villager trading hall and if you go over here this pretty much takes you out to the villager trading hall now some of this design was been the humans which is the straight rails that lead out there these other parts i designed just putting them together just pretty much your generic piston bolt however you can go ahead and dispense a cart here and a cart will drop down That was delayed. And then you just hit the launch cart, and then it will take off. Now this straight section here was designed by Ben the Human, and it is one of the fastest piston bolts that you can design on the Bedrock Edition. And if you have not checked out this piston bolt, this piston bolt is absolutely phenomenal. If you are looking for a piston bolt especially a straight one go and check out his piston bolt video you will not regret it 
Ben the Human is one of the most underrated Bedrock Redstone designers on Bedrock. He has some amazing doors, amazing videos, and I highly recommend checking him out. So up these bubble columns here, we go into our villager trading hall. This villager trading hall is a silent whisper design and absolutely loved the design and was able to get all of my villagers in here nice and close. I believe each one of these entire modules all the way around hold 44 villagers total. So if you're looking for a villager trading hall, definitely check out his villager trading hall. It's definitely a awesome system and it works very well. Up here, you can see we have some crazy construction going on. This is kind of a part of what I have inside of my head, and I'm just trying to put it down onto Minecraft, which is one of the reasons why we play Minecraft. So I'm basically just building a giant kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Library? But I'm just trying to kind of build a giant building around it that's kind of out of my head. And I kind of have a pretty good idea of what the building's going to look like when I'm done. However, I just have not obtained enough quartz and other materials to get it fully built yet. So it's a, another work in progress. Like, I don't have enough. This over here is just a very small phantom farm. This is the first phantom farm that I made, which I have since designed my own phantom farm. And that is on the server. However, it is much, much further away. So we're probably not going to have time to go over that phantom farm because it's several thousand blocks out. But that's pretty much just your basic self-harvest phantom farm there. This over here is a general mob farm. And this one basically sends all of the general mobs to the nether. That way you can get them out of the mob cap as fast as possible. And be able to get a bunch of loot. This thing I don't really use a whole lot because I have my other general mob farm and that thing is loaded a lot of the time that I'm on the server since I'm over in that area quite often. In here is a little hut that I built. So pretty much I built this cabin to give everybody an area to where they could have a safe place to AFK to sleep and set their spawn point while working on this huge community project that we had. Also has all of the tables, ender chests, stuff that you would need while working and doing stuff on the server and also a bunch of tools that i've put in here to help out the other members that way they are able to not have to constantly repair their own stuff oh bye renee she's heading down there now and if we look down here we're going to just take a look before we head down there uh, if you have watched some of my videos before then you will have probably seen this down here this is my dual creeper farm that i have designed and I'm wanting to say this is probably one of the fastest creeper farms on Bedrock. Uh, I did just release an update for it to make a change on the upper portion. Very simple change. And that was actually the video that showcased these creeper farms here. This creeper farm puts out a ton of gunpowder. And I mean an absolute ton. There's just like I, I can't use all of this gunpowder. I mean it's I can't open up those because there's ice right there. but. They're all filled, like every one of these. And as I said before, this is all survival. Um, so yeah, this creeper farm definitely puts out, it puts out over 16 stacks per hour. And that is just more gunpowder than you really know what to do with, even being on a server like this. Keep in mind, this is while we're using it. So we have a nice steady supply. Anyways, this was a giant community project digging out this entire quarry. And I blasted a very short section of it over here, as you can see. However, digging was the way to go with being on bedrock. We don't have TNT dupers. And it was just a whole lot better just to dig it all out. So we had most of our members over here. And we knocked out this quarry in, what would you say, Renee? Uh, several days, maybe a week? Yeah, maybe four, four. a week, yeah four days, five days, somewhere in there. It didn't take a whole lot of time with all of the people helping. And they just, they put in a tremendous amount of effort to help. And it was amazing to see it come together. And I can't wait to see if we end up doing another one whenever the 1.18 pops. Uh, that's definitely going to be a whole lot more difficult with the, I could say Grimstone, but the Deep Slate. Um, however, oh, more rockets, thanks. Did you need those? Nope. Okay. For you. I just made them. Oh, what well then? 
Oh, okay. Well, don't use up all my gunpowder. I have limited supply. Whatever. <laughs> you owe me. <laughs> Alright, so let's move on. This is where all of my personal iron comes from. This is my personal AFK fishing farm, which I've used probably all of like three times. And up above, we have our regular squid farm. I have to say regular now because we now have two different types of squid. And this does also produce a bunch of fish and bones. So I'm able to get a bunch of different things with it. And I have a little AFK area here. This little AFK area will load not only my ink farm and squid farm, but it will also load my iron farm, which is this is pretty much the same iron farm that Renee has built. Again, I apologize. I cannot quite remember who made the tutorial. I would love to give credit, and I might end up going back and looking these up and crediting them inside of the description, so keep a eye out on the description so I can give credit to where it is due. And then also the Iron Golem I have not built. Again, I'll see if I can find the original credit for this guy because this guy is such a work of art. The only thing that I changed was the glowing eyes because you gotta have glowing eyes on a giant Iron Golem. <laughs> so, where that rail leads to, I have a very small villager breeder over there. Really not worth going over there and checking out. Very, very small. Um, over here in the distance, as you can see rendering in, if you want to fly over there, Renee, we will go and check it out. This was a Corrales inspired bulldozer that. I kind of, I wanted it to be bigger, and I wanted it to be more the size of, like, maybe a D9 cat. So, definitely inspired by Corrales' build, but it's one of those that you build and tear down, build and tear down until you get it just right, and this makes me happy. It does. I'll be it really, doing, came out, really came out incredible. And I'll be doing more construction equipment out here because, you know, it's all about expanding the size of the city and bringing stuff together. Yeah, and it's nice to kind of paint a picture as to what's happening, almost as it would happen in real life, rather than just build buildings as you just throw them down, like one day they're not there, next they're there. It's nice mm -hmm. to see things like this to where it almost looks like an active construction site. With that segue, we'll go past a couple buildings over here. I'd like to bring you over to this little building. This little building I designed as a gas station turned office turned warehouse that's been built upon many times, hence why you see a lot of different materials in a garage in a dock. But what do you this for? Go ahead. I apologize in advance, just to let you know I am an absolute horrible cameraman. Continue. <laughs> but this we wanted a place where we didn't have to always go back to spawn to get more materials and so this was designed as a sorting system where you could just put anything that you had in this chest here and it would sort it into these barrels automatically and we've outgrown this so we'll come around the back side and show you some of the workings of it if you will not coming don't mind me. It's a big auto sorting silo system. Our very own RS built created his very first custom out of his own brain choker box unloader. When we did the big quarry dig over there, we needed a way to <laughs> transport and save a lot of those materials. And so he built this out of his own imagination inside this old receiving dock slash garage. And it worked yeah. extremely well. Yeah, I was really happy that how this really turned out. This was actually one of my very first videos that I have actually put on my channel. And if you've been a subscriber since the beginning of my channel, then you know that this was my very first video that I put together. And my, have I grown since then. Watching those videos, I was like, I don't want to take them down because they're kind of history. But man, I guess every step's a learning step though, huh? And here's the loading dock that you can see from the outside. 
I'm equipped with a custom camel. Oh, that's not a camel, you idiot. That's an alpaca. Okay, that's totally saying inside of the video. Or a llama. Wait a minute. What's the difference between a llama and an alpaca? Hey, come here. Are you a llama or are you an alpaca? I don't know. Uh, I'll Google it later. Okay, let's continue. Alpaca your head. <laughs> well, that's Silo. With all the excavation that we did out here, that silo filled up pretty quick. So then we decided to build more silos out here to contain more of the materials that we process. So we built this the silo system to contain more of those materials. Still under construction, part of the mess. <laughs> Over here, we're going to have it feed in to this building, which is our furnace building. Another great design by RS Built. Yeah, but after you see the video I just released, you're gonna to want to tear this thing out and, and you know put the new one in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, think this thing is lovely. He built the furnace array, and then I was tasked with putting a building around it, and I had fun just slapping this thing together and using all sorts of different parts and pieces. Yeah, uh, this was a fun build. She just wanted a very small furnace for out here at the city. Um, however, depending on how the city grows and how the members grow on here, we might end up, like I said, redoing this and putting in a bigger one that's faster. Not that this thing isn't slow by any means. However, you could always make it faster. More furnaces make it faster. Um, so it really all depends, but there's a lot of stuff out under construction out here and that just really goes to show how much of an active realm that this is because everybody's always building something new and we try to keep motivated switching from one project to another that way we avoid burnout and if you can't find a bed to sleep in our own moderator dot that rs built was talking about earlier built this wonderful hotel with many luxurious master suites yes and it came out really nicely so we have the bar area lounge she, area for new guests i wish that she was on here to give a tour right well you can't you can't forget the amazing workout room for paying guests down here paying guests why did i never know that there was a workout room down here because <laughs> you've never paid to sleep here I would you ever have. Guest book? <laughs> I never knew that this was down here. Yeah. This is a treadmill. I could have been bag. down here like speed bags, like left and right, and left and right, right, left, left, right. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> I would use my yeah. left hand too, but um, Mojang has not given me the ability to use my left hand for much of anything aside from holding this totem and occasionally spamming rockets all over the place. So, <laughs> Yeah, Dot is very, very creative when it comes to her builds and her interior design. She's definitely one of the best ones on the realm right now. I agree. I'm trying to figure out what this is. Probably like an arm worker router. Uh, this thing, it looks like it'd probably bend me in too, so I'm just, I'm not going to attempt to use that thing. Why did I never know that this was down here? <laughs> it's a surprise. Do you know underneath the community house, there's a secret maze with two secret rooms that you can find if you're good enough. Really? Yes, oh, there is. Are you talking about the tunnels that you dug to your base that I always get lost in? Nope. There, there is a secret maze underneath the community guest house. And here is the wonderful pool on the roof. I would love to just be swimming in here, but again, bedrock gets the short end of the stick. And I don't think I can even swim with a trapdoor. So, oh well. Oh, I, ju I jumped out of the window, sorry. Oh, you're fine. <clears throat> Each one of these suites is color-coded with a, a lounge up here on the very top, of course. Hang on, I'm coming. Okay. So we have an under, under the swimming pool lounge. This room's rather moist. 
Oh no. <laughs> and then when you're ready to retire, <laughs> come down here to one of the master suites. And they are color coded. You have your TV room with your giant big screen TV. Yeah, it looks like an 85 inch, doesn't it, Renee? <laughs> he's he's making fun of me because that's what I have for a TV in my living room. That's not a TV. That's a wall. <laughs> but each one of the bedrooms have have been color coded and. She's done, a, like I said, a heck of a job with her interior decorating. <laughs> but when you're done for the day, <clears throat> go to bed, you need to wake up in the morning. We have ourselves a Starbucks coffee over here. And pardon me, I don't know where she got the design from, but she is absolutely incredible at following tutorials. She Not built tough. us a Starbucks coffee company. It was one of our first commercial buildings out here. So we get up in the morning, we can come in here and have our coffee. This is absolutely wonderfully designed in here. Yes, and I was planning on opening up a Dunkin' Donuts across the street and giving her direct business. Or competition, <laughs> I should say. Well, you know, we have the Bureau of Land Management. We know they're all coffee drinkers, so... But what <laughs> kind of coffee drinkers? <laughs> This building here is by Pixel Riffs. It is a one chunk block build. This was a this was a fun one to build. One of his designs. I mi mi mixed up the inside a little bit, changed it up a little bit. This is my Bureau of Land Management building. This is a nice little office to coordinate and talk about who's building what out here on the property. So right after the 1.17 update, we inherited a bunch of new blocks. And I wanted to highlight some of the blocks. And so this was just something that came out of my head. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I wanted to show off one of the new beautiful blocks. This really is a really cool build. And if RS will come in here and run around on it, you'll actually hear that the sing as you walk on them yes. the amethyst block and then we have a large shard here and it looks like a geode if you look up yes that was a really cool detail that you put in there and that's what this whole building was built around was i just wanted to show off the amethyst and the the design of the geode and so we have this building, and my apologies, it is empty on the inside. It is by in no means is it done, but it's a multi-level building that we can purpose for whatever we want. That's kind of like my head, empty on the inside. <laughs> but multi-purpose. Yeah, it depends on your purpose. Like if you're using it for a hammer, it works great. But this is what the city is for, is when you have an idea in your head and you want to just put something down, well, that's what we made the city for, so we could just come in here and play and have fun with it. Yes, I agree. And if you have not noticed, we have, have not learned how to fly, because I can't take off. There we go. There is a ton of ground and even more ground being cleared out. And all of the chunks are also marked too, right? Is that what these marks are here? Yep, the granite blocks are marking out your 16 by 16 chunks. So if you're going to put a farm or anything inside of one of your builds, or have any kind of working redstone, then you know how to you know where to build. And it's all uh, lit up from underneath with torches. These are half bottom blocks to help reduce the spawns, and also half bottom blocks allow light to shine through. Yeah, so these are all lower slabs here. That is awesome. Yep. And I know that you were telling me a little bit about the plans that you had here on this side here. What were your plans for over here? It's so this ocean. is a very, very, very large ocean. It goes back here a long ways. We've taken a boat out there and you see a couple islands, but it's just a giant ocean. I thought this would be a fun place to build a big crane, a... Um, a port for large ships, container ships to come in. 
and unload and kind of just support the city. So if you're into building aquatic, then we have this out here to suit those needs and give you space to build. Yes, we're definitely a big fan of Corrales and all of the stuff that he's done with his uh, Hermancraft Season 7 builds as well. He's done a lot of inspirational stuff, and we can't wait to take a page out of his book and start using some of his building styles and hopefully make something out of it that comes to be our own. 110% agreed. Hey, if you need sand or dirt, come on out here and dig. We're just leveling it all off. So we're going to take a quick little detour here. And this is pretty much leads out to my industrial district here. If we go through this portal, then this is where that nether-based uh, general mob farm dumps out. And it will dump out into here to where all of the stuff falls down here and is killed by a trident killer. And then everything's collected inside of that chest right there. So if we go over here and down here this will bring us down to my little area at the bottom of the nether and this little area here is pretty much for my nether based farms and also kind of a transportation area to where I can get to all of my other overworld farms very quickly so you can see if we go this way we have the wither skull farm, gas farm, mob head farm, drowned farm, and the guardian farm and then if we go this way we also have the Phantom Farm, the Witch Farm, Raid Farm, and Magma Farm. However, if we go this direction, then down here we have the Piglin Bartering Farm. And we have all of my guys over here, just waiting to trade. Everything's fully automated here. Everything gets sorted out. The potions get sorted out, go into here, and then automatically get shuffled over here into this station here which ends up making them into a longer potion to where they are the six minute for the splash potion or the eight minute if it is for the regular size potions so it automatically extends both of those and then we also have the general stuff here that gets sorted out all this stuff is obviously for me throwing it in there and then we have the books and boots armor solid non-stackables go into here aside from the potions. However, these guys have been really productive and it's definitely a farm that you should add to your world if you don't already have one. They just give you a ton of good material. So where I want to take us now is down this road. We're going to go and check out the Wither Skull Farm, probably the Mobhead Farm, and also the Guardian Farm. So if we jump on this and jump in our rocket sled, let's take off and I'll meet you over there. So this, as soon as we get off of the ice road, we have this trident killer at the bottom. This is actually where my drown farm dumps out, and all of the drown come out of a portal up above and fall down into here to where this trident killer will kill the drown, and then all of the loot will get dropped into here. However, we're going to go up here, and we're going to check out what we have going on up here. This was a rather big project, and uh, here's the portal where the drown drop out of here where they get sent to the nether from the overworld. However, this project up here was a really big uh, project between me and Renee, and we basically made this entire thing. Oh, I'm missing a rail here. Uh, basically made this entire thing. We had to spawn proof the entire portal. This was before they changed the despawning mechanics, so we had to spawn proof a lot more. And this is basically Silent Whisper's design for the Wither Skull farm. And the way that it works is you have all of these chambers to where you will get spawns inside of here. And then the carts will go pick up whatever is inside of these chambers and then bring it back to be teleported through that nether portal that we just went by. However, on the very far side here, I designed a actual uh, nether based farm that produces charcoal and produces many other items as well as the, the wither skulls also and that dumps out inside of these chests here and you can see there's a ton of charcoal there and all kinds of stuff however we have kind of picked through it but you can see we got 64 skulls there and then another 64 there with another single one so this thing produces quite a bit 
and it's a really nice farm. I do have a tutorial on my channel if you want to check that out. It's inside of my Minecraft farm tutorial video playlist. So if we go back over here, this is the portal and the mechanism that actually dumps out the wither skeletons into the portal. And this is all designed by Silent Whisper. It's a absolute genius design. The minecart goes around and gets broken on that cactus, pulled into the hoppers, and then all of the minecarts will go back into here. If we go up there, up there I have a gas farm. It's just pretty simple. Uh, I believe it's designed by It's Me James. Uh, we're not going to go over that. It's just a pretty simple gas farm. And uh, it's just like most other gas farms. Not really much to see. If we go over here, then we have this portal that leads outside to the overworld. But if we go down here, this is where the guardian farm dumps out and it dumps out into here there's lava to assist killing these guys because this thing just dumps out a astronomical amount of guardians and the trident killer really can't keep up with it and then we have all of the drops from the guardian farm right down inside of here and we're gonna go right back up here And we're not going to go through that portal, but I'll show you where that portal dumps out. We're going to instead go up here and go through this upper portal. And this portal is going to come out right around where the mob head farm is. So this is the mob head farm here. And this is the holding tank for all of the charged creepers. I'll go ahead and go over that with you shortly. However, this is all pieced together and all designed by me. And then we'll get into that, which is kind of the heart of the operation up there. Uh, right up there where the leaf canopy is, you can see my drowned farm. And the drowned farm is directly underneath it, which is right over here. Not much to see there. Uh, we can go ahead and fly over it real quick. The drowns will spawn inside of the running water below, and then they almost instantaneously uh, get pushed into the nether portals here, and they all get sent to that one portal inside of the nether, where they can fall down inside of the trident killer, and then get killed and all of the loot collected. Down here, this is pretty much the collection area, along with one of the blast chambers. And we would use this blast chamber for this nether side farm, where we would collect all of the wither skeletons out of the farm from the Silent Whisper farm. And that will be teleported out of this portal here, which there is a portal inside of this obsidian. And then they are pushed down into here. And inside of that blast chamber, we can blow up however many that we would like and get a skull from each one of them. All of these tracks are basically to load in the charge creeper in here. And I can go ahead and demonstrate that working by pushing this button. You can see it launches a cart. That cart's going to go and pick up a charge creeper, bring him back, and then he's going to go all the way down into that blast chamber and be primed. And then whenever we are ready to blow him up, we can go over here with a flint and steel, light him on fire, and then he's going to blow up and take out whatever else is inside of here. Then we can just take our minecart, throw our minecart back in here, and the whole system is completely recyclable. The charge creepers come from down here. Basically, we have a chute above that drops all of the creepers down here, and they fall into water so they don't take any fall damage. Then we can go ahead and hit this dispenser, which will remove the water. And now, since the water is removed, they can now be struck by lightning using a trident with channeling on it. And then after they are struck by lightning, they'll convert into a charged creeper. And then you can go ahead and place the water back down. This water will shove them into the corner to where it's much easier for the minecart to pick them up. So up here is pretty much the heart of the operation. And again, all of this was designed by me and it took a bunch of glass and a bunch of time to get it right. However, it works really, really well and I'm really happy with the overall product. This piston here is just to stop any of the creepers from falling down here 
whenever you have charged creepers below and regular creepers up here, you don't want to mix the two. So this piston being extended is going to stop all of the creepers. And then whenever you want them to fall down, you just hit this lever and all of the creepers will be loaded down into there. You have to wait until that tank is completely empty. And then once you have all of the creepers up here, you'll be able to open that and refill that and then repeat the process of turning them into charged creepers again. This water stream is really long, that way we don't run into them affecting the mob rates and the spawning rates. I know technically it should not matter because the name tag ones are supposed to be out of the cap. However, I was running into problems with the name tag creepers stopping the spawning inside of my farm. So down here is pretty much the AFK area where everything takes place and you have all of the controls here and all of these controls so you can go ahead and hit the switches for whichever one you would like to control different parts of the farm but basically what you want to do is we want the creeper to go to the mob head farm and this is kind of two farms in one because if we want the creeper to go down below we will have it to where it goes down to the wither skeleton farm and then that's going to redirect it down below or if we want the mob head farm which is over there where that blast chamber is you want this straight up just like so so for instance we're going to do this on the wither skeleton farm to shoot one down that chute and the mob head farm we can direct all of the remaining mobs to the mob head farm so if we want to get the heads for the skeletons the zombies the creepers whichever you would like we can leave this like this and all of these will drop through that chute there and be redirected to go into the blast chamber to gather their heads if we hit this lever then that's going to redirect the mobs down into that kill chamber and if you look down there where the magma blocks are as soon as i hit that lever the magma blocks close allowing the mobs to fall down on those magma blocks and then they will be killed and taken out of the mob cap. If you look directly below here you can see my creeper sorter. I have a tutorial on this and you will be able to check out the tutorial and be able to make this creeper sorter if you would like. And we have a creeper coming down and you'll be able to see that creeper sorter working. Since the creeper is the smallest mob, they are small enough to fit underneath those trap doors and go into a different lane. Once that creeper goes into this other lane, it goes through this other sorting system. And that other sorting system, only the baby zombies can fit through. And once they fit through, they land on the magma blocks and they will be killed by the magma blocks. While the creepers are not small enough to go through there. So they keep on going down the stream and eventually they get pushed up this water elevator here and bringing it around here. They don't blow up because we have glass in front of us. And then we're going to basically pick up some name tags here. If you don't name tag the creepers, they're going to despawn. So we want to take our name tag and then whenever you are ready to name tag them, you're going to step forward on this pressure plate, which is going to release that piston and the creeper is going to go by this opening in the stair and give you an opportunity to name tag him. So then you can name tag him. He was successfully name tagged and now he's going to be on his way to go all the way down there for the chute in order for him to be on the holding area. So as you can see, the creeper's coming down here to the holding area. Since this piston is extended, he's not going to drop down there and he will stay here until I hit this lever which, like I said before, you don't want to mix the charged creepers and the regular creepers, so he's going to stay there until I run out of creepers. Those creepers down below, the charged creepers, are strictly for the lower blast chamber. And then up here, I have charged creepers and a holding tank up here for the mob head farm. So say, for instance, I want the creeper to go to the mob head farm instead, then I'm just going to hit this lever, which is going to redirect the creeper instead of going this direction. It's going to redirect him that way. And then we have the same thing that goes on over here. We have another control board. And on this control board, we have to where we can send a regular creeper to the blast chamber. This is if I want to gather a creeper head, then I can use this. Or we have a lever here which will switch it and redirect the creeper to the lightning tank and whenever we redirect them here this is so I can have creepers in order to charge them 
and it's basically the same thing here. I have a piston holding there, and as soon as I'm ready to name tag the creepers so they don't despawn, I walk forward, name tag them, and then they get pushed into this holding tank here. While they're inside of the holding tank, I can go ahead and hit this lever and cut the water off. And that's going to allow me to throw a channeling trident and make the lightning strike the creepers, turning them into a charged creeper. And then I can turn the water back on, which is going to load them into that corner, which will hold them in the position to be pushed in to the charged tank whenever I hit the button. Whenever I hit the button, it's only going to open it up long enough to let one charged creeper through. And then he will be pushed down into the blast chamber. I have this here to where I can push this down, that way I can hold any mobs from going into the blast chamber. And they will basically make their way down here. And the same thing goes like before. I just light the charge creeper, or I stand next to him and make him blow up. And then he's going to go ahead and drop all of the mob heads. So over here I just have a very simple general mob farm feeding this thing which is only three levels tall. In the center there I have a magma block which will take care of all of the spiders that fall down there. That way we only have the zombie skeletons and creepers that fall through. So once they fall through they are going to come down through here. And since I have the kill chamber deactivated and the magma blocks opened up they are going to fall directly through the kill chamber and go into that bottom water stream. Once they're in this bottom water stream it is going to bring them all the way over here and up that water stream over there. And since the farm is so big we do want to be careful that we don't get too far away from these guys because if we do then we are going to be greater than the 44 block despawning distance and that's going to make the mobs immediately despawn since we are on a simulation distance of 4. As you can see, they are making their way up the water elevator here. And once they come up the water elevator here, they will come over here to this piston, which will, whenever it's deactivated, keep them from going to the blast chamber. And we can just sit here and wait for all of these mobs to load up here. Once all of your zombies are up here and patiently waiting to die, you can go ahead and hit this lever, which is going to release them and funnel them into the blast chamber down below. You can see that they are all dropping down there. And then we can just go down here and meet them down here. Now down here we do have a cobblestone door. Whenever that creeper blows up, this door is going to blow open. However, this is the door where we have to go through in order to collect the heads. And if this is not here, then these zombies are able to escape. You can see their legs there. And we only have a single block partition separating them from the zombies that way. The creeper stays over here, and I don't have any difficulty with lighting off the creeper. So now that them guys are in place, we can go ahead and hit our load creeper button, which is going to send the creeper down to the blast chamber. And then our creeper is going to fall down below. And as soon as he falls down below, we can go ahead and take our flint and steel and go ahead and light him off. And that's going to blow up all of the zombies. And then we can go ahead and remove this door. And you can see we have zombie heads. And we got five zombie heads. You're going to get a head for every mob that you kill under this version of Minecraft Bedrock. How do I... Oh, there's a skeleton. This is not part of the plan. Well... This is the zombie head. How do I look? The texture is a little different because we do run the Lithos pack. However, that pretty much wraps it up for the mob head farm. So if we come over to here, this is where this portal comes out inside of the nether. And this brings us to the guardian farm. This guardian farm is a design by Silent Whisper. Again, and this guardian farm you can either use in the overworld or you can use it inside of the nether. I did run into a lot of issues with this basically pushing the tridents out. So I ended up redesigning most of these trident killers. And the fix was basically having the piston come up instead of having the piston go down. 
whenever the piston went down, it was pushing the trident down and pushing it out of the farm, which totally broke the overworld side of the farm. So after I moved the pistons on the bottom, they work much, much better. And this farm is absolutely crazy. The amount of spawns that we get out of this thing is just astronomical. If you would like to see this farm, then I will go ahead and link this exact farm inside of the description below. I do believe that Silent Whisper has designed since a new farm. However, the one that I'm going to link is going to be this farm here. And this farm is just... I cannot speak enough on the rates of this farm. It's just so crazy to watch. And you do have to be very careful because the rates of this farm, if you are not very careful, will crash your entire game and realm under two minutes. That's how many guardians this thing puts out. It's crazy. Anyways, let's move on. So this coming up here is one of my favorite builds on the server. This is Dot's very own base. And this is a place that I kind of visit fairly often to just kind of come in here and pick on her and prank her. And we kind of go back and forth pranking one another. That's why she ended up with all these multicolored sheep. These sheep were all one color at once and I supplied her with every color of sheep that she could ever need. So I was doing her a favor. I really was. Quite generous in my opinion. Yes, I thought so too. Here, let me use the, the kit like a normal person. So a little history behind this is I had actually was trying to build a creeper farm based on a design I had seen uh, by one of our content creators on YouTube. And I could never get it to quite work. And I, I knew I needed something very high and very safe. And so I built it over the top of an island out in the ocean. Never could get it to work and I abandoned it. I figured, whatever, I'm never gonna tear it down. I'll just forget that it's out there. Well, when Dot joined the realm, she found it and wondered what it was and what I was doing with it. And I said, well, I'm just going to tear it down because it doesn't work. So she came up with an idea uh, to make floating islands. And, well, you can see what she's done so far. It's quite fantastic. Yeah, I got an awesome little greenhouse here with all different things growing inside of it. And I love the attention to detail that she spends and the time that she spends putting in all that attention to detail on everything that she does. Yeah, she is a great designer when it comes to just kind of pulling out the details and, and making things look more realistic and more habitable. Of course, you're going towards the up house. She recently put a hanging bridge in there to make it easier to get to it. Yes, and this, um, this is something that she's recently been, I believe, under construction with, but this, I just recently watched a movie. It's taken me all these years to watch the movie, and now I understand what the house is, but she's been building this for a little while, and she's just starting to get the balloons placed up top, too. If you would like to make a good chunk of diamonds, she's actually looking for somebody to help put balloons up on top. <laughs> so, if you want to earn some money, there is, through the nether portal, a safe and easy way to get out here. And you can get up there and help her out, make some diamonds. Yep, the nether portal is right up this waterfall. And every time I look at this nether portal, I chuckle because it, it reminds me of the time that I rigged this with the tripwire with the dispensers to drop all of the chickens down and there was just a chicken bomb that exploded all over this place and she probably had she probably had a hundred chickens flying around here it was hilarious but that's the type of things that we do on the server and uh we just have a bunch of fun we we do like to prank each other like any other mass group of people that's playing together having fun however we do keep it friendly to where there's no hard feelings between it we try not to you know kill each other because Nothing. We don't like griefing, but pranking is sure a lot of fun. Oh, you're going to see that on the video. What? Uh, nothing. Don't worry about it. I didn't do anything. <laughs> what have you done? Nothing. But anyways, that's... Uh...
there's a ton more of stuff to really go over on the realm. However, we are definitely running out of time. We have spent probably three hours, maybe four hours recording now. And uh, we have to kind of keep this a shorter video. That way it's not too terribly long. So we're probably going to end up ending the video here. However, <clears throat> the whole purpose of this was just to kind of show everybody around the realm, show everybody what we do here, what we're about, and to let everybody know that we are actively looking for new active members here. Again, the members that we are looking for do need to be 18 years or older, and we are looking for uh, people that are looking to have fun, express their creativity on Minecraft, and be able to build and build as a community. Uh, we're not trying to find somebody that just wants to come on the server, go in their own little corner, and build their own house, because at that point you might as well just play on single player. We're looking for somebody that's going to come in here and interact with everybody, build friendships, build a family, uh, and also interact with the marketplace, the way that things are built, and kind of work together on a hermitcraft style type of realm like we have and what we have really worked hard to set up over the past year on building this realm we don't really know the future of the realm as far as where it's going to go or how many members we're going to have but we do know that the realm is going to stay open however it is a prime private realm and you will have to be invited to it it's not something that anybody can just join uh, we do kind of do a slight screening process to make sure that you are a good fit for the realm what that else what else you created harry carry <laughs> <laughs> he jumped out of the water over the fence and off the island and we're probably responsible for it because we just loaded the chunk <laughs> He was pretty, too. Anyway, sorry. No, you're fine. So there's a slight screening process that we do have. It's not a major one. However, we do just ask a couple questions, make sure that you are a good fit for the realm. And then, of course, do a meet and greet with the moderators, administrators, and make sure that everybody's on the same page, bringing somebody else on board. Similar to what would happen with Hermitcraft or something like that. And obviously, the people that come on obviously have to abide by the rules of the realm, not griefing people's bases and not stealing people's stuff or ruining other people's stuff, things of that nature. Um, in closing, is there anything else that you would like to say, Renee? No, I just am excited to meet some new people and see what you're capable of building and welcome you in to be part of our community as we grow and migrate over to a larger server with more features and opportunity. We hope you choose to join us and hope you like what you've seen so far. I agree. We're definitely looking forward to having new members on here and basically building new friendships and having more people to play with. Right now we do have about 14 members on here. Not all of them are active and we are trying to find some more active players so we can have a fairly active realm and have quite a few people on here at one time. With that being said, if you are interested in joining the realm, the contact information for me and Renee will be inside of the description below. And feel free to message us on any of the links that are provided below. As always, we thank you guys so much for watching. This has been RS Built. This has been Renee. See you next time. Bye. Bye.